Hey guys, Anthony here with We Back Tesla, and We Back Tesla because if Tesla fails, EVs fail, and we can't have that. So please consider subscribing, become a part of the movement, and when you decide to make that awesome choice of buying a Tesla, use our referral link down below. Today was Tesla's earnings call, and I wanted just to break down quickly what went on, what Elon had said, what Tesla had said about their earnings for quarter one. And hopefully leave a comment down below, tell us, tell me what you guys thought about it or anything that you've read about it. But this is going to be kind of raw, so let me just get to it. The first chunk of the call was talking about uh, just summarizing what Tesla's done. So the notes I have here say, no other company has a full stack, which no other company does. The full stack meaning software, hardware, the cars, the network, everything. Tesla has it. Tesla's got the, the foundation laid that no other car company has for just electric vehicles and autom autonomous vehicles. So that's a big deal. See, half of deliveries in the last 10 days of Q1. So Tesla delivered half of all their cars they delivered in Q1 in the last 10 days, which was was huge. That, that That's just like an insane amount of deliveries to cram into 10 days. And they said that was mainly because of the global expansion and they uh, prioritized production of overseas cars and crammed everything else in the last 10 days and that should just be a one quarter thing. Uh, let's see, Model 3 was the best selling premium sedan in the US by 60%. That was known and that's a huge deal that I don't see anywhere. Uh, Norway, most cars ever sold in a quarter. It's another big deal. Global expansion began and that was alluded to earlier in the call. Let's see, the Model S and X upgrade that just happened last night actually. Uh, they posted about that. He talked about that briefly. Two, 200 kilowatt charge, uh, upgrade to the powertrain and the battery. Uh, and actually it was using the same battery pack size as the previous cars, but the Model S long range gets 370 miles now, which is insane. What other car can go 370 miles on pure electric energy no other car like not one like this and and no other car company is going to come close to that anytime soon most exciting product roadmap of any company in the world which I couldn't agree with more like I can't think of any other company that is just shaking an industry like this like Apple used to do that like you used to be super pumped for their next product or their next iteration and it's starting to slow down on their front but Tesla I mean shaking up the the transportation industry like they are and they're going to be with full self-driving and just electrifying transportation in general it it's exciting to see where this is going to go um and then they talked about the instability being caused by the uh amount of changes in q1 and some of those were self-inflicted as far as their instability with their prices and their pricing schemes and putting models out there taking them away from the website and that instability hopefully is gonna slow down for the next quarter and it kind of sounds like that's what they're planning but yeah so the next chunk uh, they were talking about money so financials 2.2 billion uh, in cash at the end of the quarter and that was down 1.5 billion from the previous quarter uh, they had a couple notes of as to why that was so they had a 920 million dollar note payoff that had happened and a lot of the rest of it went to uh, working capital increases for their global expansion and they said that those were one-time occurrences and shouldn't be you know so the next quarters are going to be a lot better because those one-time things are, are in the past now um, prioritizing let's see yeah, they were prioritizing overseas production of most of Q1. So like I said, in the last 10 days, they delivered half of their cars. So they had been prioritizing delivery or production and delivery of a ton of cars overseas, which also went into their uh, capital increase for the quarter. Um, gross margins for Model 3 were slightly down, but they had 20% margins on Model 3. And that was due to the introduction of the standard range um, and they also kind of alluded to them uh, countering that with some cost efficiencies across their their things uh, 
they were able to cut costs other places to make up for that. Um, and they ended that kind of just talking about how they have an insanely solid foundation and a very promising future because of it. So no other car company has this foundation that Tesla's, you know, busted their butt for the past decade, you know, to get here. And other car companies are just barely even starting to think about getting here. So uh, Tesla's foundation is solid and hopefully the next few quarters and the next few years reflect that. Um, there were some additional questions after the call uh, or after that portion of the call. Um, a few of the questions I wrote down here. Mid-May close on the Maxwell buyout. Uh, they, they keep pushing that a little bit but they said there's no reason uh, to be alarmed and that mid-May that, that should be completed the Maxwell purchase so expect to see some Maxwell technology put into batteries and in possibly the near future uh, Tesla insurance product this was a new one that I I hadn't even thought of or had been on my radar insurance on Tesla's can be very unstable and, and very drastically different across all the insurance companies and all the, the locations and Tesla I guess is working on a an insurance product that they'll be announcing in about a month um, so that's news I, I'll be real curious to see what that looks like uh, and the other question was related to be, uh, their energy sector and Elon had talked about this before but he, he mentioned that battery cell production was their limitation on that and that they're just kinda of scrapping together any sales they can get to still push their energy sector, their power walls and stuff, try to still produce, but Model 3 production has been, you know, eating up a lot of their battery production. But they see that being improved um, going forward this year. Uh, other questions, Tesla, Tesla Semi production. The Tesla Semi uh, should go into production next year. That's what they said. No location set for where they're going to produce that. Uh, FSD upgrades for people who bought FSD but don't have the the FSD computer in their car. Elon again reiterated that there's no rush for that. He said two to, it's going to be two to three months before that computer is truly needed. Um, so don't rush if you have the 2.5 hardware. Don't panic. Two to three months, uh, you'll start to see people probably getting their cars upgraded for new features coming out later this year. Uh, Model Y production. Uh, there was questions about the location. Uh, Elon had said that hopefully in the next few weeks that Model Y production location will be decided upon and it's between California and Nevada. And there was also some questions about uh, some statements he made before about Fremont, Fremont in California being at capacity and how that could be a front runner now. Uh, for Model Y production and he said that they had went back reevaluated and, and there's some efficiencies that could be made and some expansions that expansions that could be made to the Fremont facility that could make that work for them. So in typical Elon fashion he's he's he says things and then we th we're like wait a minute what maybe you should take some time to think about that and then turns out you know they kind of changed their mind uh, but that's that's typical with Elon. Um, so California and Nevada should know in the next few weeks where Model Y might be produced. Uh, and then demand. Uh, there was a question about demand and Elon's points were that the Standard Range Plus is a very compelling car and sh is showing very strong demand. And the SNX upgrades, which people had kind of been waiting for and anticipating, have happened as of yesterday. Um, there's there's no reason to think that demand is going to be a problem going forward. Uh, and then global expansion is another thing. That's another demand lever that that gives me confidence for Tesla going forward as far as their demand and, and meeting the numbers that they have projected. Um, that's really all I got. I did uh, shut the call off and I didn't get to listen to any more of it, but that that... I feel like I got a good sense of, of the full call. If you guys 
see anything else or hear anything else, leave it in the comments and l let's talk about this stuff. What do you guys think Tesla's future looks like going forward? Do you think this first quarter is as bad as a lot of the other mainstream media seems to make it out to be? I personally don't think so. I think Tesla's got such a solid foundation that they've been, been busting their butts to, to, to make. And I don't know, I see, I see great things. And I really hope that you guys yeah, enjoyed this. I hope that you consider buying an electric vehicle, specifically a Tesla, if you haven't already. And that's all I got for now. Please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.